In Santa Clara, California, a small town, the Smith family was renowned for their unity and strong principles. Two sisters, Rachel and Emily Smith, lived there, their lives intricately bound. Their tale from childhood is one of love, betrayal, and tragedy, unfolding in an ostensibly serene community. Born in 1985, Rachel Smith, the elder sister, embodied success and confidence. She was the family's shining star, excelling academically and professionally. Naturally commanding respect and admiration, Rachel was adored by teachers and peers alike for her intellect and leadership. Post high school, she earned a scholarship to a distinguished university studying education. Upon completing her degree, Rachel returned to Santa Clara, eager to give back to her nurturing community. She took a teaching position at the local high school, swiftly becoming a beloved faculty member. Her commitment to students and passion for teaching were palpable. Beyond her career, Rachel was known for her dynamic personality and staunch family support, particularly towards her younger sister, Emily. Born in 1990, Emily Smith admired Rachel greatly. While Rachel was outgoing and confident, Emily was reserved and contemplative, finding refuge in books and nature. Unlike Rachel, Emily's strengths lay not in academics, but in her creative spirit, evident in her love for literature and art. Post high school, Emily chose to stay close to home, working at the local library. She organized events, assisted patrons, and participated in community outreach programs. Her kindness made her a favorite among visitors, especially children who adored her storytelling sessions. Rachel and Emily shared a tight bond, spending hours discussing dreams and supporting each other through life's ups and downs. Family gatherings were warm and filled with laughter as their parents, John and Mary, instilled strong values of love and unity. The sisters were inseparable, sharing secrets and comforting each other in trying times. In 2010, at a school-organized charity event, Rachel met Alex Johnson, an engineer at a local construction company. Drawn to Rachel's warmth and intelligence, their connection was immediate, and they soon began dating. In 2012, Alex proposed, and they married in a beautiful ceremony surrounded by friends, family, and many of Rachel's students. Their marriage was a portrait of happiness, with Rachel and Alex deeply in love and committed to each other. Alex Johnson, the man who would later become the central figure in a tragic love triangle, was born in 1983. A magnetic and captivating individual, Alex had a knack for making those around him feel special. His engineering career was thriving, and colleagues respected him for his skill and commitment. Alex's entry into Rachel's life seemed destined, as they met at a charity event where Alex volunteered to build homes for the needy. Alex and Rachel's relationship quickly flourished, they shared many interests, including a passion for community service and a love for nature. Alex admired Rachel's devotion to her students and family, while Rachel was drawn to Alex's kindness and humor. Their 2012 wedding was a joyful event, symbolizing the union of two deeply enamored individuals. The Smith family was a pillar of harmony in Santa Clara. John and Mary Smith were proud of their daughters and their close bond. Regular family dinners saw everyone sharing stories around the table. The Smiths valued open communication and mutual respect, evident in Rachel and Emily's interactions. Rachel's marriage to Alex only fortified the family bond. Alex was swiftly embraced as a family member and developed a close relationship with Emily, too. The trio often spent time together, whether hiking, enjoying barbecues, or watching movies at home. To outsiders, the Smith family appeared flawless a model of love and support. However, beneath the surface, complex emotions were stirring that would soon disrupt their seemingly perfect lives. Rachel, Emily, and Alex's story is not merely one of love and happiness, but also of forbidden feelings, betrayal, and ultimately, tragedy. Emily Smith had always admired Alex Johnson from the day Rachel introduced him to the family. Emily appreciated his charm, intelligence, and the joy he brought to Rachel. Alex embodied everything Emily desired in a partner, but never allowed herself to pursue. However, over time, her innocent admiration evolved into something deeper and more complex. In the summer of 2017, a particularly stressful period for Emily, work at the library became overwhelming, and she felt increasingly isolated. Rachel and Alex, her usual support system, were occupied with their own lives and growing family. 
Emily found comfort in her moments with Alex. He made her laugh and feel understood, something she desperately needed during those challenging times. The turning point came one June evening during a family barbecue at Rachel and Alex's home. It was a quintessential California evening with a gentle breeze and the aroma of grilled food in the air. Rachel was busy with their young daughter, leaving Alex and Emily to manage the grill. As they talked and laughed, Emily felt a strange, intoxicating mix of emotions. Alex's presence was both soothing and thrilling. She found herself drawn to him in a way that transcended familial affection. In the weeks that followed, Emily and Alex found their time together increasing. A shared love for books drew Alex to the library, where they discussed favorite authors. Initially casual, these visits became the highlight of Emily's day. She began noticing details about Alex, his eyes lighting up when discussing beloved books, his thoughtfulness, and his kindness towards everyone. An unexpected moment of mutual realization occurred one evening. Emily, after a tough day at work, felt particularly down. Alex, sensing her distress, invited her for a beach walk. As they strolled side by side, the setting sun casting a golden glow over the water, Emily opened up about her struggles. Alex listened attentively, offering comfort and encouragement. His concern touched Emily deeply. Sitting on a bench overlooking the ocean, their conversation grew more intimate. Emily confessed her feelings of loss and loneliness, and Alex shared his own fears and insecurities. A palpable connection, an unspoken understanding, transcended words. In a moment of vulnerability, Alex took Emily's hand. The touch was electric, sending a jolt through her. She saw her own feelings reflected in his eyes, longing, confusion, and a spark of something forbidden. The first kiss happened almost spontaneously. On a quiet library afternoon, Emily was alone in her office with new arrivals. Alex stopped by to return a book and stayed to chat. Their conversation flowed effortlessly, the world outside fading away. As Alex prepared to leave, he stood close to Emily, their faces inches apart. A charged silence hung between them, both acutely aware of the growing tension. Without thought, they leaned in, their lips meeting in a gentle, tentative kiss that deepened into something more passionate. The kiss was everything Emily had imagined, sweet, tender, and filled with the promise of something forbidden. Breathless and wide-eyed, they pulled apart, guilt and exhilaration washing over them equally. They knew they had crossed a line, but their powerful emotions made it impossible to turn back. In the ensuing days, Emily and Alex grappled with their emotions. They knew their feelings were wrong, that pursuing a relationship would betray Rachel's trust. Yet their attraction was undeniable. They decided to keep their relationship secret, meeting whenever they could find a moment alone. Their secret rendezvous were thrilling yet guilt-ridden. They met at secluded spots around Santa Clara, a quiet library corner, a hidden park alcove, or the beach at sunset. Each meeting was a stolen moment of bliss, filled with whispered confessions and stolen kisses. They reveled in the intensity of their connection, even as the weight of their deceit bore heavily on their hearts. Emily's life began to revolve around these secret meetings. She would count the hours until their next encounter her thoughts filled with memories of his touch and the sound of his voice. Alex, too, was conflicted between his commitment to Rachel and his deepening love for Emily. Guilt gnawed at him, yet he couldn't deny his feelings. Keeping their relationship hidden proved more difficult than anticipated. Rachel, always intuitive, started noticing subtle shifts in Emily and Alex's behavior. Emily, once open, became more secretive and guarded. She would disappear for hours without explanation. Her lively spirit dampened. Alex seemed distracted, his attention divided between his family and his hidden romance. The strain of maintaining their secret weighed heavily on both Emily and Alex. They lived in constant fear of discovery, their anxiety escalating with each passing day. Every glance, every touch was a risk, requiring careful discretion to avoid suspicion. Despite the obstacles, Emily and Alex were drawn to each other irresistibly. The secrecy added a thrilling element to their relationship, making each stolen moment more precious. They communicated through discreet messages and late-night calls, their conversations filled with longing and desire. As months passed, the strain of their secret affair began to show. Emily, consumed by guilt and fear, 
struggled to maintain the facade. She grappled with her emotions, torn between her love for Alex and her loyalty to Rachel. The constant deception weighed heavily on her, and she began to question whether their relationship was worth the pain and risk. Alex, too, was torn. He loved Rachel and their daughter, but his feelings for Emily were undeniable. He found himself living a double life, unable to reconcile his love for two women. The guilt gnawed at him, and he knew their secret couldn't remain hidden forever. Their secret meetings grew more tense, the once sweet moments of bliss overshadowed by growing tension. Arguments became more frequent, their frustration and fear boiling over. Emily accused Alex of not caring enough, while Alex felt trapped between his duty and his desires. The cracks in their relationship began to widen, threatening to expose their affair. The beginning of the end came in early 2018 when Rachel discovered Emily's diary. In it, Emily had poured out her heart, detailing her forbidden love for Alex and the anguish she felt. Rachel was devastated by the betrayal, unable to comprehend how her sister and husband could deceive her so profoundly. The confrontation that followed was explosive. Rachel, hurt and angry, confronted Emily and demanded answers. Cornered and overwhelmed, Emily confessed everything. The pain in Rachel's eyes was too much for Emily to bear, and she realized the full extent of the damage their affair had caused. Alex, too, was confronted by Rachel. He tried to explain, to apologize, but the trust had been shattered. Rachel could no longer look at him without seeing the betrayal. The family that had once been a pillar of love and support was now torn apart by deceit and heartbreak. The beginning of Emily and Alex's secret affair was marked by intense emotions and a powerful connection that neither could resist. Their love, though forbidden, was real and all-consuming. However, the deceit and guilt that came with their relationship ultimately led to their undoing. The thrill of their secret romance was overshadowed by the pain and betrayal it caused, leaving a once happy family in ruins. The Johnson home was thick with tension. Rachel Johnson, desperate to salvage her family and shield her daughter, confronted Alex. She implored him to end his affair with her sister Emily, if not for their marriage, then for their child's sake. Rachel's love for Alex remained steadfast despite the deep wounds his betrayal had inflicted. She hoped that for their daughter's sake, Alex would see reason and return to their family. However, Alex had made his decision. His relationship with Emily had stirred feelings he couldn't ignore. He was convinced that his future lay with Emily, not Rachel. He revealed to Rachel his plans to divorce her, seek custody of their daughter, and marry Emily. This revelation devastated Rachel. The thought of losing her husband to her sister and being separated from her child was unbearable. Emily found herself caught in the middle of this turmoil, confused and torn. She never intended for things to escalate to this point. Her feelings for Alex were genuine, but she hadn't envisioned a future where he would leave Rachel and disrupt their daughter's life for her sake. Emily was paralyzed by indecision, unsure of how to proceed without causing further harm. The stress of the affair and the threat of losing her family took a severe toll on Rachel's mental health. She began to suffer from severe anxiety and depression. Despite her deteriorating mental state, she continued to live with Alex and their daughter, unable to fathom a life apart from them. The home that had once resonated with love and laughter now echoed with silence and tension. Rachel's emotional turmoil was mirrored by Alex's own internal struggle. He was determined to be with Emily, but the guilt of hurting Rachel and their daughter gnawed at him. His once clear vision of a future with Emily became clouded with doubts and regrets. Nevertheless, he continued to meet Emily in secret, unable to stay away from her despite the pain it caused everyone involved. Rachel was aware of these secret meetings, which only deepened her sense of betrayal and despair. The household was a powder keg, and it was only a matter of time before the simmering tensions erupted. The tragic climax came on the evening of November 15, 2018. Alex had just returned from another clandestine meeting with Emily. He drove his SUV up the secluded cul-de-sac where their house was located, his mind preoccupied with thoughts of how to finally resolve the situation. As he approached the house, he saw Rachel standing outside, her face a mask of anger and hurt. As soon as Alex stepped out of the car, Rachel confronted him. The argument that ensued was fierce, fueled by months of pent-up resentment and pain. Rachel accused Alex of destroying their family, 
of betraying her trust and of abandoning their daughter. Alex, in turn, accused Rachel of trying to manipulate him and using their daughter as a pawn. The argument escalated as they moved inside the house, their voices echoing through the empty rooms. Their daughter slept upstairs, blissfully unaware of the turmoil unfolding below. The isolation of their home on the quiet, dead-end street meant that no one could hear the shouting or intervene. By dawn, the house was unsettlingly silent. Early in the day, Rachel called Emily, her voice eerily calm. She informed Emily that after their argument, Alex had packed some belongings and left. Emily was shocked. She hadn't seen Alex since their meeting the previous evening and had no clue where he might have gone. Emily attempted to reassure Rachel, suggesting that Alex may have needed to cool off and would return once calm. But Rachel's next words sent a chill down her spine. Rachel stated she no longer cared about Alex and didn't want to see him again. The finality in her tone left Emily uneasy. Rachel hung up, and the ensuing silence was stifling. The once close family was now irrevocably shattered. Emily felt growing dread as hours passed without word from Alex. She sensed something was gravely amiss but couldn't pinpoint it. She replayed her last conversation with Rachel, seeking any hidden meaning or clue. Anxiety consumed her, making focus impossible. Meanwhile, Rachel was in a state of emotional detachment. She went through the day's motions mechanically, her mind a fog of conflicting thoughts and emotions. She knew she had crossed a line that night, a point of no return. The gun she had purchased for protection now felt like a symbol of her own desperation and fear. As day turned into night, Alex's absence became more pronounced. Rachel's resolve to shield her daughter from the truth strengthened even as the reality of her action set in. She knew she couldn't maintain the facade forever, but for now, she focused on protecting her daughter from the chaos that had engulfed their lives. Unable to bear the uncertainty any longer, Emily decided to drive to Rachel and Alex's house. She needed answers and to see for herself that everything was all right. The drive felt endless, her mind racing with worst-case scenarios. Upon arrival, the house was dark and silent, starkly contrasting the turmoil within her. She knocked, her heart pounding. When Rachel opened the door, Emily was struck by her sister's appearance. Rachel looked exhausted, her eyes red-rimmed and hollow. Emily demanded to know what had happened, where Alex was, and why Rachel had said those things on the phone. Rachel's response was chillingly simple. She repeated that Alex had left after their fight, and she didn't know where he was. But there was an edge to her voice, a coldness Emily couldn't ignore. A wave of nausea washed over her as she realized the full extent of the unfolding tragedy. Emily left Rachel's house feeling more unsettled than before. The answers she sought were not forthcoming, and Rachel's cryptic behavior only deepened her unease. Her heart pounded with fear and frustration as she drove away. She knew something was terribly wrong. Unable to shake the feeling that Alex was in danger, she decided to call the police and report his disappearance. When Emily called the police, she explained that Alex had gone missing after a heated argument with his wife, Rachel. The officer listened patiently but seemed skeptical. Ma'am, it's not uncommon for people to leave after a fight. He's probably just cooling off somewhere. Give it some time and I'm sure he'll return once he calms down, the officer said. Emily's protests were dismissed. The police didn't view Alex's disappearance as urgent, attributing it to a voluntary departure. Emily was overwhelmed by a profound sense of foreboding. She was certain something awful had befallen Alex and couldn't simply wait for his return. She dialed Alex's phone incessantly, but each attempt went straight to voicemail. Panic surging, she contacted Alex's parents, David and Susan, and his closest friends, Michael and Kevin. None had seen or heard from Alex since the previous night. The next day, Emily's anxiety intensified. She called the police again, but they had no updates and maintained their belief that Alex would likely return on his own. Frustrated and desperate for answers, Emily decided to confront Rachel once more. She drove back to the house determined to uncover the truth about Alex's whereabouts. Upon arriving at Rachel's house, Emily found her sister in an eerily calm state. Rachel, I need the truth. Where is Alex? Emily demanded, her voice quivering with emotion. Rachel repeated her story about Alex leaving after their argument. But before Emily could press further, her phone rang. It was the police. 
Emily's expression shifted as she listened to the officer. The color drained from her face and her hand trembled slightly as she ended the call. They found Alex's car, she whispered. It was abandoned in a wooded area about 50 miles from here. Emily's heart sank, and a wave of nausea washed over her. The police had found Alex's car, but there was still no sign of him. The dread that had been consuming her intensified. She needed to get to the police station immediately. Emily drove to the police station, her mind racing with grim possibilities. Upon arrival, an officer approached her with a solemn expression. Miss Johnson, I'm afraid we have some bad news, he said gently. Alex had been found in the back seat of his car, shot in the head. Emily felt the ground slip away beneath her. The world spun, and she struggled to comprehend the officer's words. Alex was dead. Her heart ached with a mix of grief and guilt. Deep down, she knew Rachel was somehow involved in his death. Emily recounted everything to the police, the affair, the conflict between Rachel and Alex, and the events leading up to his disappearance. The police took Emily's statement and then went to Rachel's house to question her. Rachel denied any involvement in Alex's murder, sticking to her story about their argument and his subsequent departure. However, her demeanor seemed odd to the officers. Rachel was too calm, too composed for someone who had just learned of her husband's violent death. The officers' suspicions grew, and they decided to bring Rachel in for further questioning. They also obtained a warrant to search the house in Rachel's car. During the search, they discovered a handgun hidden in the trunk of Rachel's car, tucked away in the spare tire compartment. The magazine was missing three bullets. The forensic team examined Alex's body and confirmed that he had been shot three times, once in the head and twice in the torso. Ballistics analysis matched the bullets to the gun found in Rachel's car. The evidence was incriminating. Rachel was placed under arrest while the forensic and DNA analyses were conducted. Meanwhile, Emily cared for Rachel and Alex's daughter, attempting to shelter the child from the unfolding tragedy. The girl's questions about her father's absence were heart-wrenching. Emily strove to offer comfort and stability, but her own grief and guilt burdened her heavily. When the ballistic analysis was concluded, it undeniably confirmed that the bullets that killed Alex had been fired from Rachel's gun. Faced with overwhelming evidence, Rachel finally crumbled. The police pressed her for the truth about that fateful night. Rachel began to narrate the events of that tragic evening. Alex had returned home late after meeting Emily. Rachel, her anger and frustration boiling over, was waiting for him outside. She confronted him as soon as he exited his car. Their argument escalated rapidly, spilling into the house. The fight turned physical, with Alex pushing Rachel to get past her. In a moment of sheer panic and desperation, Rachel grabbed the gun she had purchased for protection. Fear and rage clouded her judgment. She pointed the gun at Alex, threatening him to leave and never return. Alex, in his anger, taunted her, declaring he was leaving her for Emily and taking their daughter with him. The words cut through Rachel like a knife, and she snapped. Rachel fired the gun. The first shot hit Alex in the chest. He staggered back, disbelief and pain etched on his face. Rachel fired again, hitting him a second time. Alex collapsed to the floor in a daze. Rachel approached him and fired the final shot, the bullet striking him in the head. Rachel stood over Alex's body, the reality of what she had done sinking in. She was overwhelmed with a mix of horror, guilt, and a strange sense of relief that the torment was finally over. In a daze, she dragged Alex's body to his car, drove it to a secluded wooded area, and left him there, hoping to make it appear as if he had gone away on his own. When Rachel finished her confession, the police were shocked by the cold, calculated nature of her actions. She had gone to great lengths to cover up the murder, and her calm demeanor throughout the investigation had initially thrown them off. With Rachel's confession, they finally had the full story of the tragic events that had unfolded. Emily, grappling with her own pain and guilt, continued to care for Rachel and Alex's daughter. The child's innocent questions about her father's absence were a constant reminder of the devastating reality. Despite the heartache, Emily was determined to provide the stability and love the little girl needed, even as she struggled to come to terms with the horrifying truth about that fateful night. The trial of Rachel Johnson commenced on September 15, 2023, amidst substantial public intrigue and media scrutiny.
Tension permeated the courtroom as both prosecution and defense presented their arguments over several intense weeks. The prosecution painstakingly outlined the evidence, including the ballistic match between the bullets extracted from Alex's body and the gun retrieved from Rachel's car, as well as the mounting circumstantial evidence portraying Rachel as a woman driven to the brink by betrayal and emotional upheaval. Witnesses were summoned, including Emily, who tearfully recounted the events preceding Alex's disappearance and subsequent murder. The defense endeavored to cast doubt on the prosecution's narrative, proposing alternative explanations for the tragic events. However, the compelling evidence and Rachel's initially evasive conduct worked against her. On October 12, 2023, after deliberating for several days, the jury delivered their verdict. Rachel Johnson was found guilty of first-degree murder. Considering the premeditated nature of the crime and its devastating impact on the family, the judge sentenced Rachel to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. The verdict brought a sense of closure to some, yet also underscored the profound wounds left by such a tragic and senseless act. Emily, heartbroken and mourning, grappled with the loss of Alex and her sister's betrayal. She understood the need to be resilient for Alex's daughter, who had lost both parents in the most unimaginable manner. The community reeled from the revelations. The once idyllic lives of the Johnson family were irrevocably shattered. The tragedy stood as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences wrought by secrets, lies, and forbidden love. As the trial concluded, the echoes of the Johnson family's devastation lingered. The courtroom, once filled with tension, now held a palpable sense of loss and sorrow. The verdict marked the end of a harrowing chapter, but the scars of the tragedy would endure, serving as a grim testament to the destructive power of deception and hidden passions.